This video in the After Effects Fundamental series is all about effects. There are about 200 effects in After Effects, so the goal is not to learn them all. As a motion designer, there are only a handful of effects that you'll use consistently. In this video, you'll learn how to apply effects to layers or compositions, how to use adjustment layers, and along the way, I'll show you 10 different effects that I think you'll find useful. Remember that I have these handy visual guides that go with all the videos in this After Effects Fundamentals series. There are two different places where you can find effects. So the first is up in the effect menu, and then there's all these different categories of effects. Or you can also find effects in the effects and presets panel. These are all the same categories as under the effects menu. I like to use the effects and presets panel and just search for the effect that I want instead of browsing through all of these different lists. To show you the basics of effects, I'm going to use a radial wipe effect as an example. So I'm just going to type in radial and it'll bring up anything with radial in the name. The one that we want is this radial wipe here. There's a couple ways to apply this effect to our layer. So I could just drag the effect onto the layer, either in the timeline or in the composition viewer and you'll see that little green plus icon next to your mouse cursor, and that'll apply the effect. Or another way is if your layer is selected, you can just double click on the effect to apply it. You should have the effect controls panel pop up, but if you don't, under window, you can find this panel. Adding an effect to a layer gives you new properties that you can adjust and even animate. And these are obviously different depending on what effect you apply. All of these special properties for the effect will be found in the effect controls panel. You can also find them in the timeline. So if you toggle down your layer, you'll now have effects that you can toggle down and keep toggling down. And then here are all these same properties that are up in the effect controls panel. So you can adjust and animate these either down here or up here, whatever makes the most sense to you. So for radial wipe, I could animate the transition completion to make this start as a full circle and then animate to maybe like a quarter circle or something. So clearly this could be a good way to animate a pie chart or something. I'm not going to go through all of the different properties for every different effect that I show you because hopefully they're self-explanatory or you could play around with them just to figure out what they do. If you ever need to reset the effect to how it started because you've done some crazy stuff, you can just hit the reset button right here. And if you've already set keyframes, just note that that's going to set a new keyframe. So you might want to click the stopwatch to delete any animation. If you want to delete the effect, you can just select it either in the effects controls or in your timeline and just hit delete. I'm going to undo that. You can also use the FX button either in the timeline or up in the effect controls to turn off the effect. So it's still there, but you can see your layer without the effect and then you can turn it back on when you're ready. You can add multiple effects to a layer. So over in the effects and presets panel, I'm going to look for an effect called rough and edges. And I'm just going to drag this effect onto the layer. If I zoom in here, you can see that it's made the edges of my shape a little bit bumpy. And I could adjust any of these properties over in effect controls or in the timeline. And something that's important to note here is that the layer order of your effects matters. So right now you can see that the rough and edges effect is applied to this entire shape. But if I were to drag the rough and edges effect up above radial wipe, you can see that now it's only applying rough and edges to the outside of the circle because the radial wipe is happening after rough and edges is applied. So these straight lines right here are not rough. So just keep that in mind that the layer order matters when you're applying effects. If you want to turn off all the effects for a layer, there's a toggle for that right here. You can copy and paste effects from one layer onto another. So let's say I want to copy both the rough and edges and radial wipe effects from this big circle onto the little one. So I'm just going to select these in the effect controls panel, but you could also do this in the timeline and then hit command C and then select my second circle and hit command V to paste. And if I play this back, you can see that the radial wipe is not working the same way on this circle because it's radial wiping from this center point. So what I need to do is go to the wipe center and just take this control 
by clicking this button here and then just lining it up in the center of this circle and now it'll work in the same way. There are tons of third-party plugins out there that allow you to download new effects for After Effects. So for example, Trap Code is an effect that I downloaded. And some of these are paid, some of them are free. I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy a bunch of effects, but I just wanted to mention this if you see that people have different things in the effects and presets panel or menu than you have. You can apply effects to individual layers or to entire compositions. Here's an example of when it can be useful to apply an effect to an entire composition. In this composition, I just have one composition called Boulder Text. And this has a bunch of different layers that make up this text animation. Back in the Boulder Animation composition, I'm going to duplicate the Boulder Text composition so that I have two copies of it. I'm just going to hit Command D to duplicate. Then I'm going to go over and find an effect called Fill. This is the one that I want, so I'm going to drag it onto the top composition. And you can see that this has added a red color to the entire layer. And then over in Effect Controls, I can change the color. Now if I offset this layer by a couple of frames, I'll have the white coming in first and then the blue. So I could keep doing this. And since I duplicated the layer that already had the fill effect applied to it, this layer already has a fill effect, so I can just go in and change the color and maybe offset these a little bit more. But just like that, I have a cool colored animation. If you apply the fill effect to a layer that has some different colors to it, for example, this keyframe, it's just going to completely fill that shape, so you won't have any distinction between your colors. So an alternative effect to do this, but still have some differentiation between colors, is to use the tint effect. So I'm going to go find the tint effect, and it's this one under color correction, and I'll just bring that on top of the keyframe layer. It's going to make it black and white, but you have two different color options. So the dark colors, the blacks, are going to be mapped to this color, so I could go in and like... Let's choose a yellow. I'm just using the eyedropper to do that. So now we can still see that there's a light and a dark side to this keyframe, but I've managed to recolor with yellow. So one use of the tint effect is to take an entire scene and make it monochrome colors. Blur effects can also come in handy, so you can find them under blur and sharpen. And fast box blur can be nice because it's a really fast effect and doesn't take as much time to render as something like Gaussian Blur. And then you can really quickly adjust the blur radius and even animate it. If you have a layer or a composition that you want to bend, there's an effect for that. So here I have a whole composition that has this seaweed that's made up of all these different pieces, but I want to bend the whole thing. So I'm going to put the seaweed into its own composition, like you can see I've done here, and then we'll apply the bend to the entire seaweed composition. So in effects and presets, I'm going to search for bend. The one that I want is called CC Bend It. So I'm just going to drag that onto my composition. Now notice that it's cut off a little bit of the composition. So the first thing that I need to do is adjust the bend start and end positions. So you can see these little controllers here. And these just allow you to move where the bend starts and ends, but it also affects where the layer is cut off. So I'm just going to bring the start down to the bottom, the base of the seaweed, and let's bring the end a little bit above the top of the seaweed. And now if I adjust the bend amount, I'm going to set a keyframe and then go forward in time and bend it. Now we can bend that entire layer and we could bend it back the other way just like that. And if you go too far, it will get cut off, but I've made my composition big enough that I don't really need to bend it that far. And since I set these keyframes up in effect controls, if you want to see them on your timeline, instead of toggling down a bunch of layers, you can just hit U on the keyboard. CC Sphere is a cool effect that you can use to wrap 
a flat layer into a sphere. So it can be used to make a map into a globe. So I'm just gonna apply this to the layer. And then over in effect controls, I'm just gonna bring up the radius so we can see it bigger. There's also options for light and shading. So if you want a more flat design look, you can just adjust the ambient shading to 100 and the diffuse to zero and the specular to zero. You can also rotate this layer. So you have X, Y, and Z rotation. So we can just rotate and animate this. You could animate a spinning globe really easily. One thing that can be frustrating with CC Sphere is that you can kind of get this little artifact where the wrapping of the flat layer meets itself. So you can see this like faint line right here. To avoid this happening as much as possible, you want to make sure that the layer that you're wrapping is in a ratio of two to one. So like 2000 pixels by 1000 pixels. For what it's worth, I found better luck avoiding that artifact by using a shape layer. Here I have a composition with a composition of this animation of the shape tool icon. So let's say I wanted to make a pattern with this shape. So I want it to repeat all across this composition. I can use the reptile effect for that. So I'm going to search for that and it's CC reptile and I'll just apply that to the layer and then I'm going to expand it to the right. And this is the pixel amount. So you have to expand it quite a bit. And then also let's expand it to the left and up and down. And now without having to repeat this composition a bunch of times and then have all those layers in my timeline, I just have this repeating pattern with this effect. Don't forget to check out all the other properties to see what other options you have. If you ever find yourself needing to animate a bunch of different particles, instead of trying to animate them one by one, there is a cool effect for that. I'm going to search for CC particle, and there's actually two, but I'm going to talk about particle world. First, we need something to apply this effect to though. So I'm going to go up to layer, new, and then solid. We're not going to see this layer, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like or what color it is. It just needs to be a layer that fills the composition and I'll just name this particle so I know what it is. And then I can apply CC particle world. And by default, it's just gonna give you this animation, but if you go into the settings, there's a ton of different things that you can do. So we could adjust the particle to be like a bubble or something. We could adjust the colors. And all kinds of stuff. And you can adjust how this animates and how many of them there are. So I just wanted to bring this up in case you need to animate particles. Now you know what to look into instead of trying to animate every single particle one at a time. An adjustment layer is a layer that allows you to apply effects to it. And then those effects will be applied to all of the layers below the adjustment layer. So to create an adjustment layer, you just want to go up to layer, new, and then adjustment layer. Now we have the adjustment layer on the timeline and I'm just gonna go find an effect to apply to this. So I'm gonna use simple choker. So it's this one right here. I'll drag that onto the adjustment layer. If I bring up this choke mat, you can see what simple choker does. It's kind of merging the shape layers in a more organic shape. So if I turn off the adjustment layer, either with the eyeball or just turning off the effect, you can see what it looked like before. And with the simple choker, it's kind of merging those shapes. If I move this circle out from underneath the adjustment layer, you can see that the simple choker effect is no longer applied to this circle. It's no longer merging with the other circles. And that's because the adjustment layer only applies effects to all the layers below it. So I'll just bring that back. I animated the position of these circles to make this cool liquid looking animation. So this is just one example of how an adjustment layer can be useful for applying effects to multiple layers all at once. Now that you know how to use effects, you can learn any new ones that you need as you need them. Don't let the allure of cool looking effects distract you from learning more important animation fundamentals. 
In the next video in this series, you'll learn all about masks in After Effects. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy animating.